All right, now we have been working with uniform quantization. We will start now considering non-uniform quantization, the compounding process. In a non-uniform quantizer, as you can see here in the diagram, the levels on the y-axis are not uniformly spaced. This is called non-uniform quantization. So let's see how it works and what's the advantage for doing non-uniform quantization. Now we address the issue of non-uniform quantization or compounding. So far we have seen uniform quantization where all the y levels, all the levels on the y-axis as you can see in the diagram here are divided uniformly, which means the spacing delta nu is or delta v is constant, the same value. This is called uniform. Now, we need to notice a few things here. The first thing is statistically for voice applications, most of the time the signal has small amplitudes and low signal to noise ratio for most of the time. As you can see here in the example, the red signal, uh, on most of the time we're speaking um, softly, all of a sudden we shout and then we go back to our normal voice. So we're saying here statistically for voice application, most of the time the signal has small amplitude. So those levels are not utilized. We're only focusing on the small levels. So this is not being made use of. Most of the time the signal to noise ratio is low. And if you want it in numbers, the signal voice may vary as much as 40 dB. I mean, the difference between the highest level when we shout compared with the lowest level in terms of power could be 10 raised to power 4. That's 10,000 times. So what does that mean? It means that if we are going to divide things uniformly, then this is not going to be made use of. So we want, ideally, constant signal to noise ratio for all values. We want the best signal to noise ratio for all values. You can see for large amplitudes, an error will not change the amplitude much. But the, for small amplitudes, we'll have large error. So the idea is, is there a way to make the signal to noise ratio independent of the amplitude? Okay, recall first that uh, for uniform quantization, assuming uniform signals, the derivation that we have done, we found that, that the error, the noise power depends on the spacing, delta nu. So it's delta nu square over 12. We have done this derivation in the previous slides. That's to say, the error depends on the spacing. So if we keep the spacing like this, we get delta nu, which is the error, fixed. Is there anything we can do about it? The answer is yes. So this is the diagram that shows you the uniform quantization, where we have delta nu is constant for all, all values. And the non-uniform quantization suggests that the error depends on the step size, which is delta v. So the solution is to make small steps here because we want small steps for most of the time. And then we use large steps for large amplitude. This is like progressive taxations. When uh, in countries with taxes, usually they with income tax, they have larger amount of tax, tax for uh, people with high income and smaller amount of tax for people with low income. This is why we call it progressive taxation. The amount of error delta nu depends on the amplitude. So instead of having uniform quantization, we're going to have non-uniform quantization. We have smaller delta V for most of the time. And whenever we have high, uh, the, the taxation or the spacing becomes larger. So this is uniform and this is non-uniform. Okay, this is equivalent to first, instead of changing our quantizer, another trick we to do is I will talk, I will take this signal and compress the signal in terms of amplitude. So I will still be using uniform quantizer like original one, but I will compress the signal. So one way or another, either you uh, use non-uniform quantization or you compress the signal and use quant uh, uniform quantizer. This is equivalent to first compressing the signal and then use uniform quantizer. Later, we will have to do, of course, the opposite to get the signal back to as it used to be. That's called uh, decompress. Notice the word compress or decompress here is in terms of the amplitude. Okay, so the name comes from here. We have to do compression and then expansion or compressor and compounding. 
if you would pick little words from here and there we get the red from here the green from there and some common words we can say that we have a compounder what's a compounder it's the process of compression making compression and then expansion so since the transmitter receiver now we try to answer how do we do this compression is it random or there must be some formula so that we can do that decompression we're going to use approximately logarithmic compression okay the user uh, we need to use uh, logarithmic compression characteristics to uh, to get what we want to get the quantization noise proportional to the signal to noise ratio and that was our main objective so the following diagrams these are the standards that are accepted by the CCITT or now the Inter International Telecommunication Union this is the name of the agency that manages the communication standards for uh, all countries we have two standards we have one standard for North America and Japan North America and Japan another standard for Europe and the, and the rest of the world international uh, routes okay so what is this and how to read it I'll try to explain in a second okay in the x-axis we have the normalized message the message compared with its peak so this way I have one when the message get to the peak we have a value of one and the y-axis we get the compressed value so you can see that if mu uh, the American standard use mu while the European standard use the a low we have what we call the a low and then mu low okay these are parameters if we change them we change the amount of compression for example if mu equal to zero we have a straight line which means the input and the output remains the same there is no compression similarly for the European standard a equal to one means there is no compression 0.2 give you 0.2 0.6 give you 0.6 as the line start to get tilted we get more compression for example uh, those values up to 0.2 20 percent now is expanded the small values get expanded up to almost, uh, almost 55 percent while the large values okay, here we have we have we have 20 percent but if you look at the output here we have almost five percent which means this curve will allow the values that are small to expand and the values that are uh, large to get compressed okay so a is a parameter we can change it there's an equation that allows you to sketch this curve so we have a 10 a 87.6 and 1000 and here we have different values for the mu law okay so the signal storage should become independent of the signal power because whether, it's, whether the signal is small or the signal is large we have already changed our signal loud talks and stronger signals are penalized more than soft ones all right so in this slide in this slide i'm focusing on the mu law or the american standard I'm just i'm reproducing things you can see here that i got these equations from wikipedia okay where uh, they just tell you how to sketch this you can use your matlab and just substitute for uh, you assume that your signal can take uh, in this case we can be positive or negative and then we have the logarithmic uh, expansion you just substituted the values and you get the curve as as you like so you can change mu mu equal to zero ten hundred and you get uh, a family of curves okay now the decompression equation if you, if somebody give you this compressed signal you want to go back we can use the inverse equation as given here and we get our signal back of course the normalized one okay now which one do you choose 100 or 100 and so on if the variation is high which means you have very large signals and very small signals like up to 40 db you can use mu greater than 100 for practical telephone systems the used values depending on the number of uh, quantization bits on the quantizer uh, we have either 100 or 255 okay now the combander and the logarithmic compression can be realized by semiconductor diode. This, this process we can use uh, any element like a diode where the current voltage relation is exponential or we can approximate that this with using um, piecewise approximation of course if you approximate there is a small error but remember for voice application a little bit on the change of the voice will not be uh, really affecting the, the application so once more you don't need to remember these equations we're just blotting them you need though to be able to use these curves 
Now, here is the ALO, the International and European Standard. It's very similar to what we had before, except for the fact that here we have we're using uh, a different formula for a given input x. The, uh, the, the output function equation using the ALO is the f of x given here. Again, we, uh, I'm not expecting you to remember these equations, but rather to be able to use it and then understand what it means. Okay. We also have the inverse equation. All right. If somebody give me the function, the compressed, and he wants the expanded back, we have to use this equation. Now. For the telephone, what we use in real life is this curve, 87.6 or 87.7, .7, not much difference. Okay, but these are the values that are used for the standard telephone system. The question says here, to, under, to, get, to, to check your understanding, how many levels will be used to represent the lowest 20% of the signal level for the case of A equal to 1 and A equal to uh, 10? Now, let's say that we have a quantizer, and this quantizer is having a certain number of bits. Okay, let's say that n equal to whatever number. Uh, sorry, n. Okay, we have n equal to 10, which means we have 1,024 different levels. It says here how many levels will be used to represent the lowest 20%. The lowest 20% is this reason. If it was uniform quantization, then we need 20% of this. But because of this uh, co combining issue, uh, this 20%, of course, this is positive and negative. Remember that we are using the normalized curve. So the, the, this 20%, if A equal to 1, it means that there is no combining. Uh, I'll get the same value, 20%. And I get 20% of this, approximately 2,000. Uh, sorry. To, uh, 20% is about 200, and then 200 and little more. Okay, so if you go to A equal to 10, this 20% will go up to here. That's almost 50%. Okay, this is, forgive me for the approximation. So we have 40, 50% uh, of, so in this example, we'll get 512 levels. Instead of using 200 levels, we're using 512. Because of this, if A was more, you can go accordingly. So more levels will be used for the smallest values. And this is the idea of non-uniform quantization. Of course, the opposite will be done for the large values. Okay, that is 20%. For the case of 10, we were dealing with only, uh, sorry, 5% or so. So you can see here, the lowest values get more levels and the highest values get less levels. Now, what is the impact of the signal to noise ratio? How good, how much we did, we did we achieve by doing non-uniform quantization? This figure shows you an idea about what's going on. So the x-axis is the relative signal to noise, signal power. This is the signal power. Is your signal strong or weak? So we have m squared, this is the message. Okay, the mean of this is the power value. This is the power of the message. All right. So before, with no quantization, when with, with no non-uniform quantization, for uniform quantization, when mu equal to zero, we got the following curve, which means when the message is weak, like 10, 20, the output is also going to weak, to be weak. When the signal is strong, then the output is going to be strong. What did we do? The impact of of uh, Non-uniform quantization is shown in this curve. Okay, it's shown in this curve. Now the the curve that was straight line now is being changed to almost flat curve. If you want the exact equation for this, you can plot uh, the following signal to noise ratio at the output of the mu encoder. Of course, it depends on the value of mu. So this this these again these curves depend on how much is the mu. Once more, again, we're not here to memorize the equations, but I'd like you to understand how to use them, how to plot them, and what they mean. The output signal to noise ratio is almost a flat curve now, whether your signal is strong or weak. We have tried to flatten things. Of course, there is some penalty for the high values because they occur very rarely, and there is more strength to the low signal to noise ratio value. Okay, not again that this scale is in dB scale. 
All right, so to conclude, we have penalized the high amplitude because they rarely occur, and we have improved the low voice because they frequently occur, and we almost have flattened the, the signal to noise ratio. We have made the signal to noise ratio is almost independent of how strong your signal is. Okay, that's about quantization. If you have any question, please write in the comment section or uh, communicate with me. Thank you very much and uh, we'll see you in the next lecture.